to overshoot alcohol tolerance or to back sweeten? That is the question. A few years back, I would have said, choose your yeast based off of alcohol tolerance, and the esters and things like that are kind of next in line, okay? However, times have changed, and I don't know that I'd go that route anymore. Let me explain. If you want a sweet mead or sweet wine, there's a few ways to go about it. The one that I used to do, that I'm saying I don't do anymore, is where we say the alcohol tolerance is, say, 14%. So if I know I want that to end sweet, I would just make sure that my original gravity, thereby my potential alcohol, was enough that it would surpass the 14% of that yeast, which in that case would be like a 1.110 to 1.120 or so, giving me hopefully 10 to 20 points of gravity after the yeast have given up when they hit 14%. It sounds good in theory, but here's the problem. Yeast can't read, and apparently they weren't told the numbers that were on the packet either, so they have no idea. Oh wait, there's no numbers on the packet, so that could be the problem. <laughs> to this day, I still don't understand why the manufacturers can't just put the number right on the packet, but they don't. It, you can find it on the internet though, no problem. What is a yeast alcohol tolerance? Well, it's the supposed upper limit for how much of their own poop, basically, yeast can live in and continue producing alcohol. And it is really a guideline. I have seen it as low as one, two, even three percentage points below the tolerance to as high as five, six, sometimes even 7% above the tolerance. There's so many factors involved, everything from what is in the brew itself to the temperature that it's stored at to, you know, there's a million factors involved. There's a lot of things there. Acidity plays a part, so many things that it's really unfair to think, oh, well, this yeast is going to perform exactly the same in every single situation because it's just not the way it works. They're living organisms. They do have very different ideas of what is a good condition to live in. So if you want a sweet mead or wine and you want to know for sure that it will be sweet, how do you do it? It's actually very simple. You make sure that your original gravity reading gives a potential alcohol that is below the stated tolerance of the yeast. For example, using that 14% yeast example, if I wanted that to be sweet, and bear with me here, I would set that to maybe 12%, which is somewhere around a 1.090 original gravity. I can already hear you, but Bri, that's gonna go dry, not sweet. Exactly, it's going to go dry but it's also going to be a little easier on the yeast. It's a lesser alcohol, so it's overall a cleaner fermentation and it shouldn't stall. You shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. And at that point, you back sweeten it. And the great thing about this is now you get to decide how sweet it is because you get to taste it rather than relying on the yeast to decide, well, how sweet do they want it to be? And they get to have their own way. This way you get to test it. You get to taste it along the, along the way as you go and custom tailor it to your own tastes. We regularly do this on the show where we'll just put in some amount of a sugar or other sweetener and then taste it and decide if that's enough. The actual amount you put in isn't all that critical. It's to taste. Now, once you get it to the taste that you like, take a gravity reading. Now you know for next time where to get it. The amount that you added isn't as critical as that gravity reading, because if you got it to 1.012, that matters more than saying it was one point so many pounds, because what if you only have three quarters of a gallon? What if you have one and a quarter gallons? What if you have two gallons? The gravity reading means a lot more than the actual poundage of sweetness being added. Now, one very, very, very important thing about this method is there is one extra step you must do. You must stabilize that brew. Our preferred method is pasteurization. Now, why do you need to do this? Because if you don't, it can restart fermentation and they can explode. This is how bottle bombs are made, people. Let's not be making bottle bombs. Not a good idea. No, very bad. Flying glass and never mind the mess, but flying glass that exploded is never a good thing, especially if there's other bottles nearby. They can break too. So very, very important safety precaution. Make sure you stabilize. Like I said, my preferred method is pasteurization. We have several videos on that. Have questions about what I talked about here? Ask away in the comments. We're here to help. But as always, guys, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.
or shoot alcohol tolerance or two back sweet? That is the question. I feel like I should say whether tis nobler in the mind for something, but I... To overshoot alcohol tolerance or to back sweeten? That is the question. <laughs> yeah, right.